Hello everybody, my name is Josh from Drastic and welcome to another, uh, well this one's different, this isn't what I normally do, this is Pokemon Aloha, Aloha League Review, it's 32 minutes long which is a really really long video and I'm sorry if the camera's sideways, I'm gonna fix that later, I'm gonna figure that out. Um, but I am tired as can be right now, and I don't really feel like recording, but I'm going to record for you guys so that you guys have something, you know, um, but yeah, anyways, it's been a long day and, uh, I'm not really happy, but, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna watch this video. Go! Woo! Zach. I don't know who the Zach What's is. What's up, Lumios Trainers? Lumios Trainer Zach here. Welcome to the series where I review each Pokemon League arc in the anime. Each episode will be rated from 1 to 10, this is ASMR and the League's now, overall rating will be determined by the combined rating of each episode. In this I'm video, joking, I'll be reviewing it. Ash's 7th Pokemon League, the Alola really League annoying. Manalo Conference. Let's get started. That doesn't look like Ash. Episode 1. It's time for Alola's first ever Pokemon League, and mm. the big twist of this league that is still that anyone look can like Ash. enter. So it's not just Ash who's excited to compete, but all of his classmates as well. Now that what looks I like, like about a this episode thick is Ash. how the pacing felt more like a traditional Pokemon League, while the Kalos League was all like. That looks like Ash. This one actually takes its time, in a good way, to focus on the arrival and then the reintroduction of Ash's League rivals. And we've got a couple. We've got Hao, Gladion, Elima. Can't talk to him though, because VIPs only. And the most interesting one of them all, your boy Guzma. That's right. Guzma. Guzma's competing and planning to end all future Alola leagues when he becomes the champion, I don't essentially know who ruining is. Kakui's dream right when it's about to take off. I love this element, because it all of a sudden changes the Alola League from a fun and friendly competition to a struggle against Guzma and Team Skull in order to preserve the true spirit of the league. Yeah, the championship title is on the line like always, but now the gang also has like to make a, sure that Guzma doesn't I'm win. I'm sure some Pokemon fans going to tell me down in the comments below, but is there like a Pokemon battle where you can have like four Pokemon at once fighting each other? Like that would seem pretty cool. And ruin everything. So all in all, I think this episode was a good setup for what's to come. Although we don't get much of Gladion or Alima, the episode makes up for it by giving us more Guzma and Kukui backstory that'll play a major role Guzma, all throughout Kukui. the league. This episode's rating is a 7 out of 10. Alright, we're one minute in. Episode 2. Alright, this was a wild ride from start to finish. This is cause the preliminary round has all 151 trainers facing off in one huge battle royale. Ah. Freaking insane. They weren't Never mind. They said I my question was answered. There you go. Anyone can enter, cause everyone is here. That yeah, is a even weird Team Rocket Pikachu. is here to compete, and don't worry, they got Beware in check. Some awesome moments are the Ash and Gladion encounter, where they both make a badass knockout without even looking, and pretty much tell each other not to lose, Kiawe taking out Viren's goons, Alima taking out literally all of Team Skull, including Plumeria, the Pikachu and Mimikyu rematch, yeah! It's like all the action that was missing. That was missing in the Sun and Moon anime don't was crammed was into about. this episode. I love it. Because anyone can enter, the battle royale was actually a really smart way to quickly separate the weak from the strong. But the problem with having so much happening so quickly is that some things are gonna get glossed over. For example, we don't really get to see Guzma do much, or even see Malo who's using a freaking shaman for the first time. Also, tell me something. Where the heck was Hao? We should have seen these things, but <laughs> where we the heck didn't, was so Hao? The episode is gonna downgrade a bit for me because of that. But I won't let it be too big of a hindrance, cause this was still a really fun and hype episode. Also, it was great to see the main cast all advance to the final tournament, even though most of them really shouldn't. This episode's rating is a 7 out of 10. Episode 3. Oh, by the way, guys, this was a suggested video. If you're like three minutes in, which I doubt most of you are, 
I'm pretty sure most of you have left by now. But if you're three minutes in and you're wondering why I'm watching this, this was a suggested video. Um, yeah, mm, that's all I got to say. Now it's time for the top 16 to duke it out in the one-on-one -on -one oh first round. Oh my gosh, What's pretty so cool about this tired, man. Is that we get to see four battles, so there's no shortage of action, unless you're a Hal fan. But unless besides you're a that, fan. every other battle was pretty good in their own way. Ash vs. Faba was hilarious. Faba tries to be a little sneaky sneak by making Hypno send out Ash's weakest link, Meltan, but it actually backfires because Meltan eats Hypno's pendant and knocks it out with the flash cannon. Guzma vs. Alima was my personal favorite of the episode, because it showed how much of a threat Guzma is. He defeats Alima, the guy who was expected to win the whole league, even when he used the Mega Kangaskhan. His strategy was to make sure that the baby Kanga was in the way of the mother's attacks, so she would have to stop. This gave Guzma the perfect opening to strike. Freaking savage, but also clever. Definitely makes up for the fact that we barely saw him in the last episode. And then the final highlight, Lana vs. Mallow. This battle was great because it wasn't just a battle between best friends, but also it helped develop Mallow a bit more. She wasn't really sure of herself before the battle and even tries to give up when things were getting too tough. But after some words of encouragement from Lana and seeing her Sarina's desire to keep battling, Mallow was able to keep going and finally master her Z-move. Because of this, her we got an awesome collision between Bloom Doom and a Z-move I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to show you. In the end, Mallow ends up losing, but it was still a great match that helped her make her a more confident battler. This episode's rating is an 8 out of 10. Alright. I don't know. Episode I've four. never watched this, so I don't know. The first round continues with the final four battles. The first half being meh, while the second half being pretty good. Sophocles vs. Mina was kinda basic. I will say though, it was cool when Vikavolt knocked out Rabambi with a point blank <sighs> signal beam. So I'll give it that. <sighs> Next up was a Team Rocket battle. Jesse vs. James. Apparently, Jesse said she's the one who has to win, so the tension of the battle was immediately taken away. But wait, a twist! James is the one who ends up winning thanks to the power of love. Wh what are you doing here? Get out! Yeah, I was a bit disappointed by it because the battle was played up for laughs when it could have been so much better. Next up is Kiawe vs Ace Rola, and this is what really helped the episode. It was a solid battle with some decent challenge for Kiawe since he had to overcome Gengar's cursed body ability as well as having Marowak's bone stolen. It was both cool and hilarious to see Marowak go inside of Gengar to get it back. And in the end, Kiawe advances thanks to Marowak's final Shadow Bone. Nice one. Weird. Then there's the final first round battle of Gladion vs Lily. This was my favorite of the episode. Now a lot of people complained about how quick it was, but what did you expect? I don't know what Lily is probably is. the weakest of the Sun and Moon gang, and some of y'all are out here expecting an epic 20 minute battle? Nah son, the battle happened nah, exactly son. how it should have. And even though she lost, you know like so. Gladion and Lusamine, I was just proud to see how much Lily has grown as a trainer, which was the so whole point proud. of the battle in I'm the first so place. Proud. And with that, the top 8 advances to the quarterfinals. This episode's rating is a 6 out of 10. Ah, uh, not as good. Not as good. Not a 7. Episode 5. What is episode 5? Ash's next opponent is Hao and his Decidueye. I don't and like is this, so Ash. Pumped that he calls for his old he family to so come help weird. with some last minute training. Now, I wasn't too thrilled with this episode, but before we talk about that, let's start off with the positives. Firstly, the little speech Ash gives his friends on why he's letting Rowlet battle. Even though he'll be at a disadvantage, Ash goes through with it because it's what Rowlet really wanted. I love this because it showed that Ash isn't just focused on the win, but also he wants to fulfill his Pokemon's goals as well. Second is the Gladion and James battle, where Gladion counters Black Hole Eclipse with Continental Crush. It's exactly what Ash did against Nanu. And not only was it a nice callback, but it also showed that Gladion is starting to adopt Ash's unpredictability just a bit. And lastly, I like how Ash and Hao use their Z-moves right off the bat. Using up their Z-moves so early on means that they can rely on it to win, which will make the rest of their battle a lot more interesting. Now for what I don't like. It's a training episode in the middle of the league, and it's not even a great one. Not only did it halt the pacing of the league a bit, but the episode couldn't really decide if it wanted to focus on the training or Gladion vs James. So it awkwardly jumps between both and we barely get to see Rawlis training, which is supposed to be the main I focus of the Pikachu episode. I remember Pikachu learning Iron Luckily, Tail. Luckily it has the good moments I mentioned, Iron Tail, this could have been a lot called. worse. This episode's rating is a 5 out of 10. I thought it was so cool watching Pikachu episode use that six. move in the new uh, Pokemon movie. <sighs> Alright, time for this one. 
We kick things off with the continuation of Ash. How far are we Ow. in? And it's a pretty damn good. God, we're only Even eight minutes facing in. facing off against his evolved form, oh, I'm he was in giving it his all. Call. I was at the edge of my seat though, because at any moment, the Sidious hits could have been too much for the little guy. Like that epic Brave Bird and Sky Attack collision. That looked rough, but don't worry, it's gonna be fine, because Raul is gonna pull through. Any minute now. Oops. Wait. Oh God. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my freaking god, the Alolo League is the worst damn league I've ever- Wait, he was asleep? <laughs> I love okay, that not gonna lie, that got me and that was freaking funny. Not only was this a funny troll moment, with no real consequence by the way, but it's totally in line with Rollet's character. I mean, he even fell asleep during Hollow's Grand Trial, which is probably why he objected the call in the first place, since he's seen this shit before. Also, I love how this became like actual sports now, with plays being reviewed and overturned. Poor Hal though. Not only did this league do him dirty by barely showing him, but now his own damn grandfather overturned his potential win. <laughs> it's not too big of a deal though, since that's not Ash's main rival of the series. And before you say it, there's a difference between Charizard who straight up refused to battle in the Indigo League and Rowlet who always falls asleep no matter what the situation. It's just who he is. Yeah, it's bullshit, but technically the Sidious didn't defeat it, so it's still satisfying to see Rowlet get the win, especially with the awesome Feather Dance mastery followed by a Brave Bird. Know your fucking place, trash. <laughs> but what do I know? <laughs> I'm just a blind Sun and Moon fanboy who wears Ash's XY clothes and has Ash Greninja as his mascot. <coughs> it's also really nice to see that Rowlet's win motivated Meltan to call its friends, which will play a really important part later on. The episode ends with the beginning of Kiawe vs Sophocles, and I gotta Ooh, say, it Charizard. looks fire. This was an awesome way to kick off their battle, and it gave an already solid episode even more great content. This episode's rating is an 8 out of 10. I fight thought so me. too. He said fight me. Episode 7. No, I agreed. Kiawe vs Sophocles continues, and things are really heating up. It's the Z student vs the Z master. Who will be the winner of this epic duel? It's obviously Kiawe. Now even though this battle had a great start in the last episode, I really wasn't feeling it this time. Maybe because I'm not a huge Sophocles fan, or maybe because the animation went from this to this. They try to make it epic by showing a collision between Supersonic Sky Strike and Wild Charge, but again, I really wasn't feeling it. Luckily, Lana vs Guzma redeemed the episode for me. Huh. What I loved about this battle is that it shows Guzma's strength, but also how damn savage he is. He knew Lana's weaknesses and exploited them to the fullest. He was ruthless and relentless and showed no mercy whatsoever. I honestly felt bad for Primarina, cause Guzma and Galisopod barely gave him the chance to even breathe. Even when Lana tries to give it her all with a Z move, damn it, you know I can't show that one, Lana. Guzma says screw your Z move, and not only has Galisopod cut through it, but also knock out Primarina in that same swoop. Wow. Damn. Guzma was no joke, and you know he went a little extra just to rub it in Kakui's face. This was great because it made Guzma even more menacing. And then the episode ends with the revelation of the semi final matches Kiawe vs. Gladion and Ash vs. Guzma. Ooh. Now, this was hype. In the end, although the first half of the episode wasn't looking so good, literally, the second half made up for it by hyping up Guzma for his inevitable battle with Ash. This episode's rating is a 6 out of 10. Mm. Episode 8 Alright, it's time for the semi-final match of Kiawe vs Gladion, and the battles are now 2 on 2, finally. One element I like from this episode is that Kiawe's sister Mimo arrives to cheer him on. After Gladion saved Mimo from Team Skull and was helping her find Kiawe, it was super sweet to see that she reminded him of a younger Lily, showing that he really cares for his sister even if he's not as obvious as Kiawe. This was a wholesome addition to the episode, cause now both trainers have their younger sisters cheering them on which is really gonna help them go all out. And boy do they do. The battle starts out explosive with fast paced action and awesome animations. Lycanroc vs Marowak might have been the warm up, but it was still a great way to kick things off. Then we get the true highlight of the episode, Turtonator vs Lycanroc. This battle was even more intense, with Gladion trying to end the match with a sweep and Kiawe giving it his all to try to stay alive. In the end, Turtonator pulls through by learning Focus Blast on the spot and defeating Lycanroc. 
Then the episode ends wow. with Gladion sending out his sacred beast, Silvalli. Man, that's what I'm talking about. This was an awesome episode. Unfortunately, it does take a while for the battle to get started, like, it doesn't even happen till halfway through the episode. The Mimo stuff was good, but the stuff with Team Rocket scheming, Team Skull being Team Skull, and showing Beware for the 10th time this league ate up unnecessary time. I just wanted to get to the battle. Aside from that though, I loved everything else. So this episode's rating is an 8 out of 10. Episode 9 now besides getting even longer unnecessary scenes of Team Rocket and Beware, again, here we get the conclusion of Kiawe vs Gladion and the beginning of Ash vs Guzma. Now going back to the first Ooh. battle, it was cool to see that both Kiawe and Gladion want to win in order to face Ash in the finals, showing that even when Ash isn't battling, it's still about him. In the end, Kiawe takes the L, but at least he tried his best. He tried to win with Inferno Overdrive like he always does, but Gladion changes Sylvalai into a fire type in order to resist the Z move. Kinda bullshit and definitely illegal, but I thought it was really cool. It was also heartwarming to see that they formed a new rivalry thanks to this battle. Aww. Now for Ash vs Guzma. This was definitely an intense one cause this is what the league has been building up to since Guzma's entry. An interesting moment before the battle is how the look in Ash's eyes reminded Guzma of Kukui, which he didn't really like. This was a cool moment that'll truly pay off in the following episode. Now although during the beginning of the battle it seemed like Guzma was in control, that wasn't gonna stop Ash. It was awesome to see Torcat go sicko mode on Galisopod even though it was at a disadvantage. I guess it was too much for Galisopod to handle, cause he uses emergency exit to retreat from Torcat's fire blast and send out Scizor instead. And you can probably guess what happens next. <laughs> Big oof indeed. This moment was interesting cause now the once cool, calm and collected Guzma is now off balance and furious. This was a great cliffhanger cause although it might have given Ash the edge a bit, Guzma's rage might mean that he'll come at Ash a lot harder. So there's still no telling how this battle might end up. Oh. This episode's rating is an 8 out of 10. Fun. Episode 10. Ash vs Guzma continues, and not only do we get an epic conclusion, but more of Guzma's backstory with a satisfying resolution. I like how although Ash is the one who wins this battle and advances to the finals, the episode mostly focuses on Guzma. So it turns out that the reason Guzma ran away was because he found Hala's teachings useless cause he could never beat Kakui. This explains why the look on Ash's eyes really bothers him. Then through Plumeria, we learn that the reason Guzma is undefeated is cause he only takes challenges he knows he can win. Guzma is strong, yes, but if he saw that someone even had a chance at beating him, he'd run away, which perfectly parallels his Galisopod. We even see Guzma kind of retreat to this mindset in the battle. He constantly tells Ash to give up and forget about winning, but Ash keeps on pushing, refusing to give up till the very end. Sound familiar? Guzma was so scared of losing that he even considered making Team Skull destroy the league because of it, but then he finally realized the most important thing that was missing in order to become strong. Trust in his Pokemon, which is what Ash always has. After seeing Galisopod tank a freaking Gigavolt Havoc and refusing to run away anymore, it finally clicked within him that he shouldn't run away and give it all he's got instead. I love this so much, and I was not expecting such a deep underlying story for this episode. And in the end, once Guzma's finally proven to be defeatable, Team Skull is still there. He thought he was gonna lose his followers, but all it did was motivate them to be just as good in battle as he is. It was so touching to see that Team Skull really loves their boss because he gives them hope that they won't always be losers. God damn, Sun and Moon. I wasn't expecting you to hit me in the feels. This episode's <laughs> rating is a 9 out of 10. Nice. Episode 11. Alright, it's time for the Alola League Finals, and it's our boy Ash versus Edgelord Gladion. Edgelord this time, the battle Gladion. is 3 on 3. Now before the battle, it was nice to see that Ash's mom and Professor Oak came to cheer him on. It was a nice throwback to the original series. It was also during this time that all of Meltan's friends finally arrived so they can fuse and evolve into... Melmetal! Alright, this was cool, cause now Ash has a huge powerhouse on his team to definitely give him the edge over Gladion. <laughs> well that sucked. Okay, I know a lot of people were disappointed by Melmetal taking an L right after it evolved, but you gotta remember that it had zero training since it was caught and only had like one official battle before this one, so it made sense for Melmetal to get outclassed. But you gotta give it credit though, it did put in some work. 
even though Ash was spamming double iron bash a lot. Thanks to Melmetal, Gladion Silvalli was pretty tenderized when it came time to face Pikachu. It was awesome to see Ash outsmart Gladion by using Electro Web to slingshot Pikachu and add some more force to its Iron Tail. This was a cool ass win. Then the episode ends with Gladion sending out his next Pokemon, Lycanroc. But wait, that ain't Lycanroc, cause it's actually Mont Zoroark in disguise. All in all, this was a pretty solid start to the finals. Having Gladion take the first win shows that he isn't one to be taken lightly and deserves to be here just as much as Ash. And the cliffhanger of Zoroark's reveal really makes you want to see what happens next and how Ash will handle it. So I am so ready for the conclusion of this battle. This episode's rating is an 8 out of 10. Nice. And I think we're getting episode close to 12. the end. No, we're not, apparently. Okay. Ash vs. Gladion Still here. continues, and it's no joke, because Alolo's first ever champion is decided in this episode. And goddamn, was it an amazing one. Was it? The episode barely starts, and we already get an epic clash between Pikachu and Zoroark. It was epic as hell to see Pikachu charge in through Zoroark's never-ending nightmare with breakneck blitz of all Z-moves. One of the best double knockouts I've ever seen, to be honest. Then we get the true climax of Gladion's Midnight Lycanroc versus Ash's Dusk Form Lycanroc. I love this matchup. Not only does this doggo fight live up to the hype of a final battle, but it feels like a pretty good payoff for the Lycanroc rivalry. The little Rockruff who admired the unbeatable Lycanroc is now finally battling it on equal ground. It was awesome. Yeah, the battle may not be on the same level as Infernape's storyline, but for Lycanroc, it works. This battle was brutal, with Gladion's Lycanroc having the upper hand most of the time thanks to Counter. But leave it to our boy Ash to turn things around thanks to his unpredictability by literally countering the final counter. What? This was wild. But because of that final trump card, Ash defeats Gladion and is now the champion of the Alola League. Cool. That's pretty cool. Guys, this was it. He actually did it. Our boys finally won an official Pokemon League. This moment was amazing. It's what every Ash Ketchum fan has been waiting for since the very beginning. I even freaking cried when it happened, guys. This moment was so unbelievable that even Ash himself wasn't sure if he won or not, and I don't blame him. 22 long years, constantly losing major league battles, but finally, our boy has finally done it. It's amazing. I, I, I don't know how else to put it. Then the episode ends with a Guzzlord appearing from an Ultra Wormhole during the award ceremony. Jeez, crazy cliffhanger to an already monumental episode. You already know what I'm giving this episode. Its rating is a 10 out of 10. Nice. I agree. That was pretty Episode beautiful. 13. What? This one was decent, I guess. Now, that's not to say it was a bad one, because it has some pretty cool moments, but I just feel like it wasn't executed well enough. It's all about Guzzlord attacking the Alola League. But wait, there's more! Because there's also two shiny Guzzlords as well. Why did they all appear here at the same time? Beats me. Now, one moment I liked is seeing Team Rocket rescue Beware. The whole series has had Beware save Team Rocket from blasting off, but it was nice to see them finally return the favor. Plus, it was a good way to get rid of the ridiculously OP Beware that would have easily taken away the tension. It was also awesome to see all the Kahunas in action as well. The problem, though, is that the whole conflict is resolved in one episode, so it feels super rushed. What is this, the Kalos League? The Tapus show up to help, but they don't really do that much, and the Guzzlords are taken out pretty easily once a few Z-moves are combined. And although it was awesome to see everyone use combined Z-moves, the hype is kinda taken away when you realize it's just 5 minutes of reused animation. Well, at least everyone had a moment to shine. God damn it, Lana! Honestly, it feels like this episode was God created it, just to Lana. have multiple different wormholes show up just to justify Poipool's return who's now in a Gonadel. And yeah, it's cool that it came back and all, but it happened so last minute with no explanation that it feels kind of forced. I will say though, the cliffhanger of the Mask World's identity being revealed was a good way to end it off and one of the episode's biggest redeeming factors. <gasps> oh, that was a big sentence. As for the rest, it's alright, but it would have been better as a two-parter. This episode's rating is a 6 out of 10. Mm. Episode 14. Alright, now that the minor inconvenience of Guzzlord is over and dealt with, it's time for the exhibition battle of Alola Champion Ash, God it feels good to say that, versus Professor Kakui. You know, since the whole Mask World secret is out. But this actually makes things better if you ask me. Especially since this time, it's gonna be a full battle. That explains why Naganadel came back so conveniently. 
Now what's cool about this episode is that it actually feels like a warm up for the whole battle, but it's still a damn good one. It could have easily started with crazy action and quick wins right away, but it didn't and I really appreciate that. This isn't just gonna be a crazy battle for the sake of having one, cause it's actually a pretty important one. This battle is not only Torcat's chance to redeem itself against Incineroar, but Ash is also battling his father figure of the series. So the hype is real. Yeah, it might be a slow start, but that just means that this battle will be a long one and there's gonna be so much more to look forward to. Also, it's not like it doesn't have its moments, cause it does. We have freaking Torcat over here who took a blast burn to the face and literally absorbed it. We could have used you back in Kalos. And Lycanroc who catches one of its stone edges mid air to hit Incineroar, which really reminded me of Ash's Crocorock when it did the same thing against Bryson. It was awesome. All in all, this episode did a good job of setting up the rest of the battle and really shows how smart Ash is battling by using unique strategies and even switching out if necessary. Kakui even does the same, so you know that the Torcat vs Incineroar rematch is coming later on. This is just the beginning. This episode's rating is a 7 out of 10. Nice. Not bad. Episode 15. Okay, this is where the real battle begins. Unlike the last episode where Ash and Kakui were just testing their skills, in this one, they actually do some damage. Right off the bat, Lycanroc is taken out by Braviary, and this was actually pretty smart, cause not only does it show that Kakui is strong enough to defeat the Pokemon that won Ash the League, but it also means that Ash can't rely on his ace anymore and has to prove that he can win with other Pokemon as well. Rowlet took out Braviary guys, are you still doubting God? Probably the best aspect of this match is seeing Ash and Kakui switching their Pokemon to get the best results. It almost feels like a chess match, with each one of them making strategic changes to give them the better advantage. For example, when Ash uses Torcat against Venusaur. Of course he wants to save it for Incineroar, but he saw the opportunity to get a quick win thanks to its type advantage. Kakui does the exact same. He realized Melmetal was gonna be a huge threat after seeing how his Empoleon couldn't do a single thing against it. So what does he do? Sends out his strongest Pokemon to take it out before it can do more damage. Damn, I love this episode. We got so much action, but it was really cool to see them try to outsmart each other as well. And the best part of it all is that Ash and Kakui are having so much fun battling each other. The episode ends with Kakui sending out Lucario and Ash sending out Naganadel. I loved how everyone got so shook the moment Ash took out a Beast Ball. Like, yeah, Ash has got an Ultra Beast on his side and he's ready to wreck some shit. This <laughs> episode's rating is a 9 out of 10. <laughs> and he's ready to wreck some shit. Episode 16. Oh my god, are we almost done? Oh Ash my god. Kakui continues stronger than ever before. And it kicks off with Naganadel versus Lucario. Guys, I love all the suggestions you send me, but please stop sending me videos that are more than 30 minutes or that are 30 minutes in general. 20 minutes max, maybe 25 if I'm feeling generous. If you want me to watch your video, if it's a video you have that you want me to watch, I'm more likely going to watch it first if it's like five to ten minutes long e uh, and the shorter it is possibly the more likely i am to watch it just for my sake because i normally record these right before i'm going to bed because i work and then i go to bed <laughs> obviously so there's a little tiny gap there where i can record <sighs> Ash knew Lucario had more experience, so the only way to win was to lure it into a close fight and use that opportunity to land an up close and personal Dragon Pulse. It was really cool to see Ash battle smartly like that, and I was so happy to see Naganadel get the win. Could you imagine if it came back only to lose and not get a single win? I would never. That was just the appetizer though, cause now it's time for the main course of the episode, Torcat vs Incineroar. It's finally time for their rivalry to conclude, and gosh dang. Was this battle? Flames! What's awesome about this match is how Ash is able to get the upper hand thanks to Flame Charge. By increasing Torcat's speed, his attacks are not only connecting more, but hitting a lot harder thanks to the Blast Burn boost. This battle was so intense that both cats end up activating their Blaze ability, which was awesome. Infernape, where you at? I love the moment where Ash and Kakui both use Inferno Overdrive at the same time. Not only was this awesome visually, but it's also the Z-move Ash taught Kakui how to use as a kid, so it all came full circle. And after an epic collision within the giant fireball, once the dust clears, Incineroar takes the fall. Hell yeah! 
And just when you think that's it, Torcat uses the last of its strength to evolve into Incineroar. Oh my god. This episode was amazing because not only did Torcat achieve its goal of defeating Incineroar, but it also evolved, which is what a lot of us fans wanted. I'm not even mad that it knocked itself out in the process. Yeah, it would have been cool to see Incineroar in action, but having it stay and lose right after the battle of its life would kind of take away from its triumphant moment. He went out in a good way, and if anything, its evolution is more of a reward for winning. The episode ends with Tapu Koko showing up to take the place of Kakui's last Pokemon so that it can battle Ash. What the heck? This is really happening, huh? What an end to an insanely awesome episode, and I was not disappointed by anything. So this episode's rating is a 10 out of 10. God, how long are these the final freaking episode. seasons? Oh, this is the final episode? This is it. You got a couple the more Alola minutes League to go. Grand finale. Ash's final challenge, the legendary guardian deity, Tapu Koko. From the jump, the episode does not hold anything back and hits us with insane action. Naganadel vs Tapu Koko might have been the warm up for the episode, but it does not disappoint. I mean, Naganadel loses, which is disappointing, but you know what I mean. Then it's time for Ash's final Pokemon, his day one partner, Pikachu. And goddamn. Pikachu is actually going in on Tapu Koko. What makes this battle so great is the fact that Tapu Koko has always had some sort of rivalry with Pikachu, so both Pokemon want to give it their all. So much, in fact, that Tapu Koko decides it wants to go all out with the Z move. So after a little rejuvenation song from the Tapus, both Ash and Kakui have their Z power restored. And then we get, hands down, the best moment in the entire league. An epic climactic Z move clash between Tapu Koko's Guardian of Alola and Pikachu's 10 million volt Thunderbolt. And my goodness! The animation, the colors, the father and son Kamehameha, all of it, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing! If you don't think this moment is cool, then something is seriously wrong with you. And the icing on the cake is when Ash and Pikachu reflect on their time in Alola. They realize they felt the power of Alola all throughout. And now, it was time to become one and use that power to the fullest. Whatever that means. But it was so cool! In the end, but it Guardian was of Alola so wasn't enough cool. to stop our boy. So Tapu Koko takes the fall and Ash wins the exhibition match. Man, what a freaking battle! Not only did Ash beat Professor Kakui, but also the legendary Tapu Koko. Add that to the list. This episode was amazing. The perfect conclusion for the Alola League and the Sun and Moon anime. I loved it so much, and it just made me even prouder for our boy Ash. Congratulations, champion. This episode's rating is also a 10 out of 10. This league's overall rating is a 7.8 out of 10. It's really good, and actually tied with Johto. Now, it's not perfect, but it's far from the worst. Very far. The biggest Very thing this far. league's got going for it is the fact that it's 17 freaking episodes long. Not only does this make it the longest league to date, but it's also the only one to show the complete tournament from start to finish. Because of this, we got to see every battle, which was awesome. Now the biggest controversy of this league, besides the how battle but get over it, is the fact that there aren't any full battles till Kakui and anyone can enter. Okay? This was actually the best way to handle the Alola League. The goal of the competition wasn't just to find the strongest trainer, but also to help all the participants grow with their Pokemon and we see that all throughout. In this league, we see things like Malo master her Z-move, Lily show her progress as a trainer, Sophocles take on Kiawe without holding back, Kiawe forming a new rivalry with Gladion, Guzmo learning not to run away from a challenge and trust his Pokemon, and not only has Ash won his first Pokemon League conference here, but his team went from one of his weakest to finishing off as one of his strongest. I love it! This league perfectly captures Alola's themes, and it's something that the Alola League could have lost if it tried to be more traditional. We would have gotten a lot of skipped battles or a bunch of double knockouts to get to the main action. And that can kinda get annoying if you overdo it too much. Yeah, it has its not so good parts, but what league doesn't? In the end, it had a story it was trying to tell and it told it beautifully. But if you've never given the Sun and Moon series a chance for whatever reason, you won't enjoy the league as much as I have. You're not gonna get the themes and you won't truly appreciate the character moments. How are you supposed to care about Lana vs Malo or Gladion vs Lily if you've never even cared about the characters to begin with? Yeah. Even Ash vs Kakui, as awesome, long and action packed as it is, won't really be enjoyed to the fullest unless you understand Ash and Kakui's relationship that was built up for this moment. In the end, Alola may not be the best league, but at least to me, it's definitely my favorite. It was a lot of fun, and had many great and memorable moments within it. Plus, it finally gave us the Ash win we've all been waiting for. 
And if you still think this league is the worst after all that I've said, then I really don't know what else to tell you. Oh yeah, I do. Hose Matt. <laughs> Hose Matt. <laughs> if you've actually made it this far into the video... Oh! That was one of the longest videos I've ever watched on this channel. Probably not the longest. Probably won't be the longest video I will ever watch, but... I'm going to tell you right now, sitting here for 30 minutes, whew, it's hard to be entertaining for 30 minutes, but I tried. Um, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, I'm not saying don't request any 30 minute long videos. Again, if it's a video that you want me to watch, I'll watch it. Um, but I'm just saying if you want me to watch a video of yours uh, like tomorrow or like the next day, uh, it, it would be more advisable for you to give me a video that's more like a, like five minutes to like ten minutes long. Because at least then, you know, I could watch that video in a short amount of time. I get it uploaded and I still have enough time to, you know, get ready for bed. Um, besides getting it uploaded then literally just passing out. <laughs> um but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did go down in my comments below tell me what would you like me to watch next um just give me the link or title to the video and i get back to you as soon as i possibly can as always guys stay strong everybody stay safe wear your seatbelt wear your helmet wear your mask don't put the flashlight behind you don't look into hunted mirrors and as always have a nice day Outro, 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 is there an outro, outro.